So the first of those things that you wanted to focus on was iPhone sales. And so why don't mm-hmm. we start there? Um, so for the most recent quarter, 51.2 million units sold. Uh, they still clock in at roughly two thirds of their revenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is the big driver for them. And obviously, probably the culprit when you look at this uh, down year over year revenue growth. So what did we see with that? Um, what can investors make of it? So I think, um, I mean, we were, we were talking about it a little bit before, but <clears throat> you almost have to look at where Apple is in the upgrade cycle and put that into context and look at it. Okay, when Apple went from the 5S to the 6, different change in form factor, everything changed, and they had blockbuster sales. I, I can't remember the exact numbers at the time, but I recall 40% year-over-year growth um, during some quarters when, when the 6 came out. Where we are now, essentially the iPhone 6SE, essentially a 5 form factor with better guts to it, mm-hmm. better processors. That was essentially on sale starting in April, so it's not even reported in the most recent quarter for Apple. And you have to look at it that way as, you know, it's pretty much expected. iPhone sales are probably going to come down a little bit when there isn't a huge upgrade, when in when there isn't a change in the form factor altogether. So, you know, you, yeah, you, you mentioned a good point. You, you almost have to look at Apple in two-year cycles and say, okay, what's happening here? Because the longer-term side of it, Apple's still adding territories. They're still growing um, in a lot of different important countries. The U.S., of course, not doing much for actual iPhone unit sales. They just, you know, the companies pretty much trade market share. But the longer-term story, you, you kind of see a, a slightly upward trending um, trajectory for iPhones over time, but you know, from quarter to quarter, definitely not. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's it's tempting to look at uh, companies' comps year over year. Sure. But when you have this very clear product cadence of the new numerical issue and then the new numerical issue S, you know, mm-hmm. and that's the year to year march, uh, it's in some ways not really fair to compare numbers year to year. It's almost more of a two year comp yeah. cycle. But also, I mean, to to put that in context as well, it's not just a matter of, okay, things are still going to go great for Apple, because if you look at previous iPhone releases, they did have the quarter over quarter growth, even in down, down times where there wasn't a really fresh um, a fresh model coming out. So, you know, it's not the most favorable, but I don't think it's anything if you're looking for Apple as, you know, a, a somewhat safer stock to say, okay, I'm out of it, hit the sell button, we're done, Apple. Yeah, and, and so. one other note with uh how particularly rough the comps that they were going up sure. against were. Uh, they actually had a lot of supply constraints when they issued the 6 to begin with. And so a lot of the demand for the 6 bled into this quarter. You know, it was originally launched uh, in what, I guess, fiscal Q1. Mm-hmm. But uh, because of pent up demand and supply issues, a lot of that wound up trickling into Q2. So that mm-hmm. inflated what was already just incredible demand because of the new form factors and a lot of the new things they brought to that line. 